Good evening. In this episode, I will share with you my beautiful encounter with artist, photographer, Mario Testino. Um, So while I was selling my works right next to this uh, landmark uh, bar and restaurant called uh, Tanelli's, um, I think that it goes back to the 1800s, late 1900s, early 1900s. Uh, right on Mercer Street and Prince Street, uh, right across the uh, the Mercer Hotel. So I made my you know magical circle right next to the restaurant. I would work on site and sell on site and I would work eight hours per day eight nine hours ten hours depends you know I would go through the night also I'm making this very simple graphite uh, on paper piece And I see walking by uh, Mario Testino, where he stops by my works and you know to to absorb the energy and to you know um, just to pay attention to because he's an artist so he understands. So as he, we were talking for you know a couple minutes, and that's when I decide that it was now or never that um, I really wanted to make myself present. So I. Mario, this is for you. I really want you to have this work. And he really liked the work. And then his assistant, very kindly, super kindly, um, took some pictures, you know, the two of us, and um, which, you know, he shared afterwards. And that's why I have this shot with uh, Mario Testino and myself standing right outside my magical circle with my words. And right behind me is the work that he took home. And um, he originally is a, a Peruvian. Uh, artist but right now it's absolutely international and his home is New York City uh, I believe and he and you're gonna forget the story how he I think that he arrived uh, in New York in the 70s and with a very small camera and he never stopped taking pictures of absolutely everything so that's a 
person with a plan. You start with a plan. And so you have talent and you have a plan. That's very important. Um, so the interaction just lasted, you know, I don't know, five minutes. And he was very happy with the work and he said, I will frame it. So at that point, I started to realize that it, it was really, truly important to have a plan because I was, I, I was selling my works to uh, tourists and people from the neighborhood for good amount of money, pretty good amounts of money, but nevertheless, uh, the, the works we're selling, you know, in the streets, so that creates a conceptual uh, devaluing of, of your work and yourself. Uh, and I became very conscious about that throughout the time, and I started to feel reluctant to keep on doing it after uh, after six, seven years. But giving my works to um, to Mario Testino was one of the first steps in my personal and and secret accomplishment that I really wanted to get through. Because I started to realize that no one was really doing everything for me. I started to realize that you cannot never ever that we uh, that I was doing that under my own free will of selling my works. I sold, once again, I sold artworks that I should have never, ever sold, but I was taking care of my bills, so I had to. I really hope that those pieces arrive to a museum or to higher places uh, throughout his clients, or maybe, well, who knows. Uh, but it was already a word of mouth about my presence in, in Soho. Chelsea. But then after meeting, you know, uh, photographers like, you know, David Eustace and Mario Testino and some other artists, then I started to realize that I had to, you know, one way or the other, Had to make myself even more present. So money became a money became a secondary thought. Money became something that it wasn't important any longer. Money or money. Uh, but what it really, really, truly became important uh, was for me to know that my works, first of all, they were very well, extremely well protected, meaning in beautiful places, beautiful houses, beautiful apartments in New York City, and that some kind of important entities, individuals, had my work because I really wanted them to have them. So I started to analyze this in a, in, in a way more, I started to dissect uh, 
where to go, when to go, how to introduce myself, and and how to always be very clear that uh, what I was giving was something extremely important, uh, not just to me, but for uh, the New York City, you know, art world, uh, that I was conscious about uh, who I was, who I am, and that it would be wonderful if they could take upon this gift and embrace it and make it shine. So, in the matter of speak, if I wasn't shining, then my works had to. So that became my first golden rule to keep gathering this, this list of, of important clients that I knew that they would welcome my work and not quite expecting anything from them. And you don't need to say anything to make someone understand that you're not really, uh, you're not after anything that they know that for you it's important for them to have them and they receive it, understanding the value of the work. But I have to, you know, share this with you, that um, these random acts were actually um, well thought and processed and they were organized. That was my university of life to, to allow me to grow and to understand uh, many aspects of, of relationships and, and how you manage, you know, important relationships and when you burn bridges and when you don't, or, or, or what is worth to burn a bridge all the way down because you have to burn it, and when other times it's important to reconstruct the bridge. Um, but aside from sometimes feeling hurt or feeling devalued or feeling, you know, put down and, and kept behind the curtain, um, which many artists obviously get passionate and, and everything becomes extremely emotional and um, less uh, analytic and you lose focus of, of, you know, on the ball, which is uh, your conceptual intellectual growth. That's the focus. Uh, not the people that you know or you don't know or, or, or people that did not help you or helped you. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters technically, right? But the, the, um, the main focus focus is is your intellectual and conceptual growth but that's as cliche as it might sound that will be your legacy and that's very important to me and to many others as well so I don't want to let down anybody especially my family so Um, once again, I was very happy. Uh, the sun was shining and it was beautiful.